welcome, Merkel. Well, first of all, congratulations. You just handed in your uh, PhD dissertation. Uh, can you name the topic? Yeah, uh, hi, Chris. I'm very pleased to be here. Uh, yeah, the PhD dissertation uh, was a summary of my research activity in the last few years, which was based on motorcycle dynamics and rider behavior, especially in relation to the to their interaction with the vehicle. So uh, it's a big, let's say, step in my life. And uh, many things which I learned, like the skills I gathered, uh, really transfer to similar fields, like in analyzing Formula One telemetries, and also uh, they, they will be useful to show you a couple of things we jump today here. Yeah, and on that note, uh, you have a sizable following on social media in your formula data analysis. Um, can you tell me a little about what you do there? Yeah, it's a social media page which focuses on analyzing Formula One telemetries and uh, lap time data to gather additional information on each race weekend. People are really enjoying, uh, and the following shows it, uh, the fact that they are now able to go more in depth inside the race and not only look at the overtakes or at the general pace of the cars, but also to understand to quantify these quantities and also to understand why some things happened and, and which were also some additional possibilities that teams had uh, available, That's as I will cool. also show today. I think one of the things I like about, I'm starting to like about Formula One is the, all the data that's there. Uh, but I know that you, you brought one today. Can we take a look at it? Yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure. It's a data driven sport in which data are needed to uh, perform well and also to continuously improve the performance. And for this purpose, I prepared an analysis using the uh, exploratory data analysis software Jump, uh, which allows us to uh, analyze uh, Formula One data easily and uh, in a, a quick way, as I will show you later. So in this analysis, I analyzed the uh, 2023 Mexico Grand Prix uh, concerning the pace of the various drivers and the various cars. In particular, I wanted to assess the impact that the tire life had on lap times. So tire life just means how many laps were driven on that specific tire. Okay, so as the tire uh, does more and more laps, we expect its performance to decrease. So it provides less grip and the car becomes uh, slower as a, a consequence. However, the how old is the tire is not the only driver of performance. There is another very significant driver of performance, which is the amount of fuel that the car has on any given lap. In Formula One, nowadays, there is no refueling. So cars start okay. the race with around 100 kilos of fuel on board. And as the laps go by, this fuel gets burned. And towards the end of the race, the cars are much lighter and are able to perform much better. So this is interesting because these two factors are sort of uh, compensating uh, each other because as more laps are done on a given tire set, the tire gets more worn out, so it provides less performance, but the car also has less fuel. So it will be performing better due to that. So these two factors, can sort of even out. And so we must look at each one uh, separately. So in this right. plot, you have uh, going from left to the right that the tire gets older, okay? And this decreases performance, but also we have five different rows, each relative to a different segment of the race from the very first laps to the middle part of the race to the very last laps in which, of course, the fuel load was much lower. In fact, we can also notice that as we go from the first row to the last row, the points tend sort of tend to move uh, farther down, which means that the performance improves. In fact, you can see that on the y-axis, you have the lap time expressed in seconds. Okay, well, and, so one question here. I, I know there was a red flag in this race, and I actually you put it where it was, but why is there no data around that? Have you, have yeah, you done so, some kind of filtering? Yeah, uh, we can say that at lap 30, uh, 32, uh, Magnussen crashed. And so this created basically a race divided in two halves, okay? Before the, the red flag and after the red flag. Of course, around uh, the red flag, the 
laps were not representative because right, they were okay, yeah. under the sense. safety car or uh, drivers were pitting as a result of it. So these points have been excluded. And I will also show you how to exclude these points and the rationale be be behind it by using jump, which makes this pretty easy. So this is the um, graph builder window of jump, which allows us to create a uh, almost any type of uh, a graph you might imagine using our data set. And I will use it to recreate that plot I showed you previously. So first thing first, we are going to, we are interested in analyzing the lap time in seconds. So I'm going to plot this on our vertical axis. We notice that the bulk of the laps are between 80 and 90 seconds, so under a minute and 30, but we also have a, a significant number of laps which are relative to a much higher lap times, okay? So these points tell a different story compared to this big part of the distribution. So we want to investigate the lap time in seconds as a function of how old was the tire, okay? And we get this sort of graph. We notice that there is not a, a the trend that we have here is not the one that we expected because we would expect the lap time in seconds to increase as the tire age increases, right? So instead, in this right. case, we notice a different trend. This, however, is impacted by all these outliers. So they might be outliers or they might be points which are not representative, as is the case. So we are going to filter them based on some, let's say, um, objective uh, conditions, okay? For example, if a driver goes into the pits or drives out of the pits, that lap is not representative because Naturally. they lose like 20 yeah. seconds more by pitting, okay? But this not tells us that the car was in any way slower. So we can and we should exclude those points. We can do this do, um, through this local data filter. So first we are using the pit out time seconds variable, which tells us how much second, how many seconds the driver needed to drive out of the pit. We are not interested into any specific value apart from the missing values. So if the pit out time uh, variable is missing for that lap, it means that they did not drive out of the pits. So we are going to select the missing uh, okay. values, okay? And you can notice already that some yeah. laps disappeared, but this is not sufficient because we also want to exclude the laps in which the driver drove into the pits. So Very we are yeah. using the specular, the dual variable, which is the pit in time in seconds. And again, we are going to select the missing values. We notice and that boom. again, okay. yeah, some additional points and laps disappeared because they are not representative. However, not all the laps in which the driver does not pit are representative. For example, in case of a safety car, the driver must could, for example, follow the safety car for hold the lap, not pitting, but still their pace will be much uh, worse, okay? Just because the safety car is slowing them down. While instead, this does not tell us that the car was effectively slower in any way. So we are, going to add this additional filter. So we are using for that the track status variable. Track status is equal to one when the lap is under the green flag. So in normal racing conditions. Okay. So we are going to use this slider to just select the data which are relative to a, a green flag. So basically that's it. And as we can see, now all the data, as I noticed previously, are in a narrow band of lap time, okay? Between yeah. 81 and 88 uh, seconds per lap. But still not uh, really showing us that trend you described in the beginning. Like we have, it's more like moving up and down. It's not, not very clear. Yeah, exactly. So even though now the laps are all representative, okay, uh, we still don't see that trend we would expect the lap time in seconds to increase as the tire ages, okay? But we are noticing some wobbling, some local changes, but the global trend is around flat, okay? So as I said, we also take must take into account the amount of fuel uh, in this analysis. So we are going to also uh, use the lap number variable to group these laps together to 
only compare laps which are relative to similar conditions in terms of lap, so in terms of the fuel the car had in any of those laps. So we divide basically the laps in five parts, okay? These are the laps from the second to the 16th, so relative to the very first part of the race where the cars had a lot of fuel, while this last row is instead relative to the last part of the race in which the fuel load was uh, much lower and so per performance was better as a consequence. Again, now the trend becomes a bit clearer because we can notice that there is some sort of upward trend, okay, as the tire uh, becomes older, uh, but still we are not taking into account the fact that not, not all tires are the same because in Formula One teams can use three different compounds. So we are also going to discern the compound used by adding the compound as an overlay by uh, dragging it, it here. So this is what we are left with. Basically, we have uh, the lap times now uh, divided between uh, their specific tire life, but also the amount of fuel, which is directly correlated with the lap number, okay? But also we have that now the laps are considered separately based on the specific compound which was used. So the soft compound, the medium compound, or nice. the hard compound. Right. So now we have, a, let's say, a more global, but also more informative view of what was really happening during the race. I have a, so one thing that really sticks out to me in this data is that some of the subgroups have some a really like narrow variance, but some of the areas, like very areas, have very much more narrow variance. Uh, so especially um, like lap number 28 to 45 and the short amount of lap, tire life, there's a lot of variance there, but also towards the end of the race, I could see there's more variance. Uh, those two areas, um, probably two different reasons, but to, can we understand those? Yeah, sure. So uh, even though now all the laps should be representative because they are relative to similar conditions as we filter them, still they might show higher or lower variability depending on which segment of the race they are relative to. For example, in the middle part of the race, like in this part, we notice that the variance is very high, okay? You have a lot of distance between the lower points and the upper points. This yeah. is sort of expected because in this part of the race, drivers already started pitting, okay? So some of them, pitted around lap 20, some of them around lap 30. So you have this window in which drivers could have very differently worn out tires. Okay, of course, the ones on a newer tire were much quicker than the ones which still had to pit. Okay, so as expected here, the variance is very high. Then here we have the red flag, as you can notice from the, um, the points missing as they've been filtered out previously. And after that, we can notice that the variance becomes much lower. So the lap times are now much closer, more, much more similar um, to each other, simply because after the restart, during the, the red flag, the drivers could mount, install the tires they wanted to. Okay, so okay. those who had the newer new tires installed new tires. All the others installed, installed tires, which even though they were not new, they were very fresh. So after the red flag, tires were, let's say, sort of uh, equalized, okay? So the drivers were now driving in similar conditions concerning uh, performance and, and tires. We can also notice, as you highlighted, that towards the end of the race, we have, again, increasing variance. This is instead due to the different incentives that different drivers had concerning pushing or not. For example, there were some drivers like Verstappen who were uh, he was first, he had a big gap to second, so he had no incentive to push a lot, risking to spin or have some other uh, problem. So even though he could have been quicker, he decided purposely to be slightly slower and bring in the car home. Instead, there were some drivers, like for example Norris, who were desperately trying to catch up with the front runners, and so they were pushing to the max. So even though in this part of the race, all drivers were sort of driving to a target lap time, 
to be quick, but at the same time finish the race with uh, tires in good condition because this was the fourth, fifth of the race. At the very end, drivers sort of started doing do different things based on uh, the the place and the gap they had in front and uh, behind them. Okay. Well, one more question. I think the, one of the reasons you did this analysis you mentioned was you were expecting like tire life to it uh, like to have an effect on the lap time. Um, but especially you also mentioned that softer compounds will degrade faster. So while on average in the beginning, medium tires will be faster. And then by some point, racers with hard tires will be have that benefit of having a harder compound and then have a faster. I'm just not seeing that uh, in your data. Yeah, this is something that was expected, but didn't really materialize. And okay. it, it did not surprise us as spectators or fans, but also the teams. For example, uh, Leclerc, after the red flag restart, Leclerc was starting was restarting with an art compound, while many of his uh, opponents uh, were using a medium compound. Uh, he was told by the engineer that, okay, you are slower than others because you are on a harder compound, but wait five laps and the medium should be uh, should become slower than the hard tire. However, this did not materialize as we can see here. And this is something that uh, also uh, caught out uh, Formula One engineers, which have a lot of data, okay? Um, right. So we can sort of see this in the data. If you notice in all the segments of the race, we notice that on average, the medium compound, the, the yellow line, is almost always below the hard compound. So we, we see that the behavior was on average slightly better, okay? At the same time, we even notice that in some parts of the race, the wear on the medium compound seems to be lower than that on the hard tires. Of course, this is also influenced by the fact that uh, we are considering all the cars, which again had different incentives, and especially we are considering they were they also mounted the medium or the hard tires in different parts of the race. But still, this highlights the fact that in a track like Mexico, in which tire wear is pretty minimal, the medium tires did not have huge wear, so hmm. they were an exceptional racing tire. And at the same time, the hard tires, um, due to the, uh, as I said, uh, low energy introduced into them uh, due to the also the track layout, uh, made these tires not heat properly, okay? They were still too cold in most parts of the race, and so they were, they never expressed their full potential. And after all, we can see of course, with the um, with the benefit of insight that the medium tire was the best racing tire on average. Hmm. Wow, that's that's super interesting. Um, but thank you. I, I learned a lot about Formula One, um, and I was impressed with with how fast you were able to do that in jump. There was four variables you you dragged in two boxes, and, and boom, you had that very uh, very informative graph. Thank yeah, you. four. You're welcome. Four variables. And uh, as, as you said, uh, it is sufficient to uh, drag and drop variables uh, into the corresponding uh, fields and boxes to do, as I said, exploratory data analysis. So to make sense of what is happening uh, be inside the data set we are looking into. So yeah. it's a very quick and a straightforward way to uh, make sense of a race, in my case, or a different data set more in general. Well, thank you so much for joining me. It's been a pleasure. For me too. Thanks, Krishna.